welcome back to my channel. I'm Alex and this is a place where I talk about what I've been knitting and sewing each month so I'm really happy that you could join me today. I'm gonna put my cup of tea down. I've got it in a lovely cup by a little Wren Pottery that I don't think I've used on the podcast for a long time. So um, yeah, I'll have a sip and I'll pop that down. It's just right today because I spent so long faffing around trying to get the camera set up that it's actually a drinkable temperature. Usually I make my tea just before I jump on camera and it's always super, super hot. So I have to remember to try and drink some of that while we're chatting today. And um, the first thing that I've got to show you, actually I'll talk about what I'm wearing quickly. This is the Rift Tea by Jacqueline C. Slack that I knit probably about a year ago now. And it's in the Fiberco Luma, which is a lovely blend of yarn for the summer. It's a blend of um, organic cotton, linen, silk, and the main content I think is merino. And this is the sherry colourway. I'll stand up so you can see it's got this sort of split hem and a lovely um, detail on the side there and at the hem. I've done the v-neck at the front and a boat neck at the back. There's several options in the pattern and yeah, it has this really simple little cap sleeve and it's a great t-shirt for this kind of weather. We haven't had a great summer so far in the UK. It's been really gloomy, um, not sort of the hot, nice June, July weather that we were hoping for, but it does mean that I can wear these kind of knitted t-shirts and I'm really comfortable. So I thought I'd quickly mention that before I got onto my projects. So the first knitting project I've got, um, I'll show you my socks. I've got these in one of my new strawberry um, berry bags for the summer. I love these summer berry bags. It's been really, really fun to be able to swap over to my summer bags. I've got a sock which is not a summer sock, it's actually called the Cozy Autumn Sock and I've shown this before because I think I had that one finished a while ago but basically I've been working on these socks a little bit. I think I've done about the cuff and two repeats. It's a pattern by Olivia from This Handmade Life and it's a really really simple top down um, pattern. It comes with a chart that's really, really simple to follow and as you can see it's in this really lovely squishy yarn. This is another yarn from the fibre company called Amble which is an amazing yarn. I love this. It's basically um, a merino alpaca blend with a recycled nylon but the yarn has been treated not with a superwash treatment but an alternative that they um, found that is a more eco-friendly way of making a yarn washable that doesn't use the superwash treatment. So I'll put a link in the show notes um, that talks about, so you can go over to their website and find out all the information about how they do that and what this treatment is, but basically one knows that it does um, make a washable yarn but it's a more eco-friendly treatment that doesn't use a lot of the chemicals and it doesn't um, put chemicals into the water and all that kind of thing. So it's a cool yarn and it's this is a really interesting colour. I'm not sure how it will pick up on camera but it's so interesting. The only way I can think to describe the colour is it's like when you see oil that's like on the road and you get almost like a rainbow. It's it's very, very interesting. I can't remember what the colourway name's called, so I'll leave that in the show notes as well, because this has been a while um, since I was working on these. It probably was in the autumn time when I cast these on. They've been sitting there for a while, and I was tempted to cast on a new pair of socks this week, and I thought, no, I have to get some of my single socks into pairs because I've got a few pairs that I've knit like this where I've got one sock done and all I need is another sock so I'm going to work on some of those before I cast on another. So these have been sitting in my knitting basket for quite a while but that's a really nice project and I'm enjoying those now I've picked those back up again. So I'll pop that to one side and I mentioned the show notes a couple of times there and if you're looking for those there'll be a link below this video in the description box um, and I also will have a link to sign up to the show notes email list where you can basically put your email in and any time a video goes up you'll get an email straight away to tell you that the video has gone live and you'll have all the show notes right there in your email so before you even click on the video you'll be able to see all the patterns all the yarns anything that I've talked about in that video and you'll have all the links right there so if you want that that'll be below here too.
<laughs> so next thing I've got is a really, really exciting one because it's a finished object and it's in another one of my bags from my shop. This is one of the limited edition bags and it's a great size for the project I'm going to show you. And if you watched last episode, you'll probably guess what's in here. It is my finished Twinkle Twinkle baby blanket and I love this pattern. It's the second time I've knit it and I will try and stand back so you can see and <laughs> get a full view. It's a lovely um, square baby blanket by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade and it has um, a, I can't remember what it's called, but it's an interesting circular cast on and you work from the center out. So it's actually knit in the round and it has a beautiful texture to it. And I really like this color yarn I picked. I've used a yarn from King Cole called Bamboo Cotton, which is a 50-50 blend. And I just thought it was a really good choice for this baby blanket. It's the DK version. Um, so it is washable because it's bamboo cotton and bamboo has some great properties. So it's really good for um, being able to wash it if the baby gets it dirty or anything like that. So it's a nice, easy one to care for for mum. It's really, really affordable yarn. So it's great for gifting to somebody. And I love this colour. It's called Old Gold, and I think it's number 625, um, but you can see it's a really great description colour. I think of it as sort of almost like a barley or a wheat field. It has a lovely kind of sheen to it, but it's a really nice, soft, neutral colour for a baby, I think, anyway. And yeah, I knit this, um, somebody emailed me recently and was asking about how long the blanket took because obviously um, often when you're knitting a blanket, it can be a really big undertaking. And I'm sure we've all had times where we started blankets and never got around to finishing them. Um, so she was interested because she knew that I'd knit one before how long it took. So I'd looked at that one and I knit that really fast. I think I did it in two weeks, um, but this one's taken me a month to do. Um, probably because we haven't been in such such a strict lockdown when I knit the first one that was in February um, and this baby was born recently so I had a little bit more time to do this one um, I wasn't sort of rushing to get it off in the post or anything but also I haven't had so much time to work on it I have just been working sort of odd um, evenings most evenings I've maybe done about an hour and I've done extra time at the weekends but um, I think that's pretty good um, to have a blanket knit as a gift in a month's time. And I love Helen's patterns. They're really easy to follow. It's a very, very simple stitch pattern. And it's quite easy to memorise as well. Once i I think there's about 17 repeats. Yeah, I think depending on the size you do, the size I did, I'm pretty sure I did 17 repeats. So once you've done it a few times, you um, very quickly get to the point where you can read your knitting see what you're supposed to be doing and yeah I just found it quite a relaxing knit to work on so I can't wait to get that in the post and send that off to my friend this is the this was baby number two I think of six babies that are going to be born this year so this is blanket number two and I actually already have another colour I'm doing one in this is um it looks quite light on the camera but it's a really nice stone shade and I've got the tiny weenies bit on here that I've done. You can see this is how it starts. I've just done the kind of setup there. Um, but yeah, that will be for baby number three. But the last three babies that are going to be born this year. Oh, actually, four babies because there's a set of twins. <laughs> so I know three of my friends and family that are having babies, but they're coming later in the autumn winter time. So I've got a bit of time for that. But um, this is the second blanket that's going to be going off to a lovely new home. And I can't wait to put that into a package. It's actually going to somebody who um, also does some knitting. So I was very careful to weave all my ends in really, really perfectly. So if she's having a look at um, the craftsmanship, I, hopefully she won't find any flaws. It was all looking um, extra special attention to detail as it was going to another maker who I knew would appreciate all that kind of thing. So, yeah, I'm really excited. Excited to gift that and I hope you like that too. I am um, 
I mentioned that that was Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade and it's just reminded me that I've noticed she's started doing some videos on YouTube. I've been listening to her audio podcast, Curious Handmade, for years now. She's been doing her audio podcast. She does it every single week and she just has a chat about what she's been knitting and sort of life updates about any crafty things that she's working on and I noticed that um, yeah she started doing some video um, podcasts so if you want to check those out I'm going to leave a link to that while I think about it in the show notes because I think if you enjoy my videos I think you might like hers as well so I'll leave a link to that and what else do I have to show you I think um I haven't got any updates on my um, sweater, my lace weight sweater that I was knitting, so I'm not going to show you that today. I think I'm going to move on and I'll show you some of the sewing bits that I've been doing. I have, um, I talked actually last week about doing the Ashton tee and I've printed out the pattern. Um, this is how I always store my patterns. I put them in these cardboard envelopes and I just store all my pattern pieces folded up inside like this. Um, so I haven't actually got round to sewing that up and cutting out the fabric but if you've ever used a PDF pattern before you'll know that's quite a big step is just choosing the size that you want to do, cutting out the pattern pieces, taping them all together. So this is actually quite a big step in the making process is purchasing the pattern and getting that ready. So that's how I tend to do all my projects. I break them down into bite-sized chunks. I'll rarely just print a pattern, tape it together, cut the fabric, sew it all on one day. That's quite rare for me. Usually I will, um, like with this, I'll spend a few however long it takes on a Saturday afternoon or something to get the pattern ready and then the next day or whenever I next have time to do some personal sewing I'll cut the fabric and I might start the project once I've um, cut the fabric out or I might start it another day but I tend to break it down I find it so much more manageable to tackle a sewing project like that rather than I think when I was starting to learn to sew my own clothes I used to get really excited and try and fit it all in one day or in one weekend and by the time I'm getting to the sewing part I would get tired and frustrated and make mistakes so I've kind of learned to just slow down enjoy the process not um sort of rush through it it's you've got to get through um that I guess it's that mentality of you see something and it's we're so used to maybe buying clothes and like you see something you love and you're ready to wear it you want to wear it that night or the next day and you can't really do that when you're making your clothes so I think I just have to like take my time and that's what I do now so got my pattern ready for that and hopefully next time I'll have the Ashton tea finished um but what I have done is I've sewn you've seen these before if you've been watching for a long time this is a linden sweatshirt and I'll stand up so you can see it's just a really, really simple um, raglan. It's got a raglan seam on the sleeves. Um, this is so simple to sew. If you're new to sewing with jersey, this would be a great pattern to start with. And yeah, I just wanted more of like a summer kind of um, colour for my loungewear. I thought I've been wearing loungewear so much, as we all have. It's only fairly recently that the UK, well particularly everywhere has slightly different rules if you're in England, Scotland, Wales or Ireland but um, in England we relaxed the rules recently and you can go to restaurants and you can see people in their homes and that kind of thing so the rules have relaxed here quite recently but um, yeah we have been wearing a lot of loungewear in this house <laughs> and I'm still continuing to wear my loungewear as obviously I'm not going out as much as we um, were but these are the trousers, and the trousers are the Hudson pants. It's kind of hard to show on camera um, without a body in them, but if you have a look at the show notes, I'll leave a blog post that I've written before where I've shown me wearing these pieces in different colours. I think it might be, uh, I can't remember, I think I've got a blue set and a grey set, so I know that I've got... Um, some pictures somewhere over on my website of me wearing the Linden sweatshirt by Grainland Studio 
and the Hudson Pants by True Bias. So I've got both of those um, if you want to have a better idea of what they look like. But this again is a simple sew. It's got a really nice pocket detail, which I like. I haven't done drawstring, um, which is an option you can do in the pattern. And the only changes I made, I shortened them very slightly. Um, I don't think the legs were particularly long because I'm really petite and I didn't have to shorten the legs a great deal for a good fit. Um, but what I did do is my jersey fabric, it had 25% stretch, but it wasn't enough for the cuff and the neck band. So I probably added about an inch uh, to both of those just to give it some more stretch and um, what I did particularly with the cuffs on the um, bottom of the pants was I sewed the um, sewed the cuff together and just made sure that I could fit it over my foot okay before I sewed them onto the leg of the trousers because I have had before where I've sewn them and really really try to make it fit into even though they're not that stretchy I'll be able to sort of ease the fabric together at the leg and the small cuff but then not be able to get my foot through which is really really frustrating and I didn't want that to happen this time so um yeah they weren't quite stretchy enough but that was a really really simple solution so if you find you're having a similar problem with any sweatshirts or trousers with this kind of jersey material don't be afraid to add some uh, length so that you can basically have a wider neck so I was able to with the neck I would have been able to fit it but it was very very tight it would have pulled in too much so by just making the the sort of binding a little bit longer I was able to get a much neater finish so that's a tip if you find that it's too tight that's all you need to do is just add a little bit more length to those and then you should be able to just sew it as normal mm, i've got lovely apple tea today and as i said it's just perfect for drinking so i'm enjoying that today <laughs> i've got um i think that's pretty much everything i had to show you actually I only did those few sewing bits and just a little bit of knitting. I honestly spent most of my time knitting on the blanket because I was so eager to get that finished and sent off to my friends. So I um, haven't got loads of knitting. But um, I will say before I sign off, a really quick thank you to everybody who left such great recommendations when I was talking about getting into weaving last time. Um, particularly several people mentioned, um, what's her name? It was, is it? Christy, no, Kelly, I think it's Kelly Casanova, and it was funny because I hadn't sort of remembered her name, but when people had suggested it and I looked her up on YouTube, I realised that I've actually watched a few of her videos, and yeah, that was a really, really good resource. She's got really clear videos, um, yeah, and she's great at explaining how to do various techniques, so if I get myself um, my own loom, I will definitely be um, re-watching some of her videos, so thank you to everybody who left a comment last time. And um, one more little bit of housekeeping, I wanted to just check and see if you're watching this video on YouTube, I'd love it if you could tell me if you saw any adverts during this video, either at the beginning or during, because I don't have adverts on any of my videos, I have the adverts turned off. And I recently had an email from YouTube, like just a general updates of what they were doing. And I noticed that it was saying that they could, they had the right to put videos on accounts even if you weren't part of the ad program. And I thought that was very interesting. So I would be really intrigued if you could let me know. I think it was starting in June and it didn't say they would be putting it on all of them. It just said that they now had the power to do that. So I would love to know, just as a little bit of research, if you saw any adverts on this video, because if you did, that's probably something that I should be looking into doing myself because obviously they um, will be profiting from the adverts and yeah, that seems like a strange thing if you've particularly opted out of having the adverts on your channel. So anyway, that's technical stuff that you don't really need to worry too much about. But um, I just thought I'd mention that. And 
that just leaves me with one more thing to say and that's thank you for watching. I really enjoy making these videos and chatting through what I have each week, um, what I've been working on, so thank you for joining me and you can let me know in the comments what you've been working on. I always enjoy reading your comments and seeing and imagining what everybody's knitting on around the world. Lots of people tell me where they are and what patterns they're knitting and I always find some new recommendations to add to my knitting queue from all of your projects that you're working on. So yeah, you can leave a comment below telling me what you're working on while you're watching and I will see you in a few weeks time, hopefully with some new projects. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you soon. Bye bye.